Hi friends. Encounter youth group. Oh my gosh. Okay, so this is not normally how we do things. We're not normally on the YouTubes, so we're gonna give it our best, but be patient with us. Uh, we're learning and I've never done anything on like a camera before. So just be patient with us. Have grace for us this time. We just wanna do things that best serve you guys. And right now this is the best we know how to love on you guys and the best we know how to communicate with all of you guys at once. So uh, we are just doing our darnest over here. Exactly. Yeah. And so this week we are gonna be doing Rooted Week 4. Um, this is a big week, it's on Strongholds. And even though the world's kind of crazy right now, this is a very personal week. Um, and this is a very good, this whole situation is a very good time for you to just sit down and reflect upon this week and what it has teaching wise. So I do want to start out with just what is a stronghold? And uh, on page 65 of your book, you get this really cool quote and it says, spiritual strongholds begin with a thought. One thought becomes a, a consideration. A consideration develops into an attitude, which leads then to action. Action repeated becomes a habit and a habit establishes a power base for the enemy. That is a stronghold. So my personal idea of what a stronghold is, is any habit that affects you emotionally or spiritually. It could be something that you know is going on or it could be something that you don't know is going on. Yeah, I'd add that if you knew it was going on um, and it's causing negativity in your life, uh, it's causing a lot of personal turmoil and probably a lot of negativity to those surrounding you. If you know it's happening, you're not willing to change it. And that's why it's a stronghold because it's holding on tight to something that, uh, it's holding on tight to you. It's something that you don't really want to do anything about um, or even talk about because you might be embarrassed about it. You might be scared of what people around you would say if you admitted to those kinds of thoughts and feelings. Um, but that's kind of what we think a stronghold is. Right. And you can easily say, well, if we're saved by Jesus and all of our sins are forgiven, why do these strongholds exist? Shouldn't we kind of live a life without sin now? And the brutal truth about it is that no, we're, we're broken humans. And our book starts talking about how our flesh is part of this sinful nature. And because we're, we have this, um, this human flesh, we are, we're prone to do um, sinful things. We're prone to have sinful desires and we're prone to have strongholds. And so what our book encourages us to do is to seek the spirit because the spirit will actively work through us to restore our true identity and helping us to become more like Christ. And so the whole point with all of that being said is just that we can't do this alone. Um, you, may, you may know exactly right now what your stronghold is. You may know exactly right now what you struggle with and something that you're holding on to. And you may have tried to overcome it so many times without the help of God and you can't do it. And so that's what, that's what our book is talking about. It's just saying that our willpower is often not enough and we need God to get us through these strongholds. And so um, it says God alone can trans transform us, cause us to grow and free us from our strongholds. And then it talks about how, how in John 15, 5, it says, God, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches, we're the branches, God's the vine. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And so pretty much what that is saying is, God is this vine. He's the source of all of our life. If we are, if we're the branches, you need that middle vine. And so from, from the vine, the branches sprout and then the fruit sprouts. And so if we, if God is the vine, we need to kind of cling on to him for us to grow. And part of growing is taking control of those strongholds that we have and letting them go having God help us through that situation so we can bear fruit and we can flourish. And so God's desire is that we live in his presence in all aspects of our lives so that we naturally bear the fruit that comes from being in connection to him and through the vine. So the way that we can get rid of these strongholds comes in very easy few steps, honesty, repentance, and freedom. 
And so before we go into the different kinds of strongholds, which Danielle is going to take hold of, um, I just want to quickly go over how do you, how do you get, how do we confess these strongholds? And so the first part is just being honest. It's being honest with yourself. It's being honest with your God. And it's being honest with maybe someone that you can say, hey, I want you to be my accountability buddy, or I want you to help me with this stronghold. But it starts with being honest with them. And a lot of these strongholds are really, really, really hard to admit. And a lot of these strongholds might make us feel like, well, if I admit it out loud, <laughs> that makes me a bad Christian. Or if I admit it out loud, that makes me unworthy of God's love. And that kind of mindset and that kind of thinking is exactly the way the enemy wants you to think about these things. They're called a stronghold because they're hanging on to you yep. because you're saying, if I let them go, people are going to judge me. Yep. But the second you're honest about it and the second you say, I struggle with this, I have this issue, um, you know, I really need God to change my perspective on this. You're saying strongholds, you no longer have a hold on me. And you're free from that. You you release the power from the strongholds. Do you have anything to add on that? Um, and just when you when you admit to them, you're not just admitting them out loud. Like we'll go over some strongholds, but one of them is bitterness. You're not just admitting like I'm a bitter person. Um, it's you know God. I feel like I'm struggling with bitterness, you know, and I'm gonna lay that down at your feet. And I'm going to give you the power over that. And I really ask you to help me overcome that in my life. Um, we can admit these things to our friends. And if you do, um, please, friends that, you know, are open. This is a community. We are a family. We're here to surround each other. We're here to help each other. We're here to love on each other. And if someone feels comfortable enough to come to you and say, you know what? I'm struggling a lot with jealousy. Um, you know, it's really eating at me. Like, I'm losing all my joy. I don't feel like this is, you know, a good thing for me. If someone tells you something, please be respectful. And, you know, they're coming to you with a lot of trust. And please keep that trust. Um, you know, it's up to them to share these things. Don't go around telling other people what other people's strongholds are. You know, this is a real group built on, you know, we have a, not like a social contract with each other, but we really trust each other with, have a social contract with, with what other. we're telling each other. So... If something was shared with the group, the group can discuss it with that person, but please don't go around and, you know, text everyone the second you find out what someone's stronghold is. Um, this is a real, a real exercise of trust and, you know, it's going to be open and you're going to feel vulnerable and that's okay. And that's, you know, what a stronghold can do is it can cause you to feel vulnerable. Not a lot of us like feeling that way. Um, but God is asking you to do that and asking you to trust him first and foremost in that moment with that vulnerability that you're going to feel because the second you release that to him, uh, it's done. And he's going to work through you with it. He's going to work he's through gonna you. He's going to let those flowers bloom. He's yeah. going to let that fruit grow. The um, stronghold might not be immediately like, I struggle with jealousy, and the second I admit to it, I'm no longer going to struggle with jealousy. That's not how it works, but it will be a major accomplishment um, in saying, like, you know what? I acknowledge this, I struggle with it, and I'm going to work to change that, and I'm going to have God help me do that. I'm going to ask him to, and I'm going to allow him to, and I'm going to receive what he does in me, because um, we can't do it on our own. Well, think about it like this. If you have a math problem in front of you, you can't solve that problem until you acknowledge it. You can't solve that issue. This is a good metaphor. You can't solve that issue until you acknowledge it and you say, okay, it's here and I have to work through it. Okay, but if you just leave it there, if you leave your homework in your closet, it's still going to be there. So unless you take out that, those problems and you say, okay, here are my problems. I need to work through them. God work through me with them. Yeah, there's some math problems that you need a calculator for. We're going to call it that. God's our calculator. In that <laughs> math problem because you can't do it just with you, yourself, and pen and paper. You need, you need God in this. But the main, the main point, and, and then Danielle's going to get into the different kinds of strongholds and then we'll wrap up. But the main point of this all is just that strongholds 
Um, admitting them does not make you unworthy of love. No. It doesn't make you unworthy of God's grace. It doesn't make you unworthy of forgiveness. No, it's the opposite. You know, you could admit a stronghold or even thinking in your head and saying, honestly to yourself, yeah, I do struggle with that. Yeah. That That's a step in the right direction. That's a step towards God. Um, so you can very, very easily feel like, well, if I admit this, I'm trash. But that's so much farther from the truth. Yeah. So uh, we already acknowledged kind of what a stronghold is in our life. Um, some of you might immediately, when we talked about strongholds, you might have something in your head that you know you're struggling with. Some of us might feel like we're not struggling with anything. And that in itself can be a stronghold. Um, you know, feeling like you've got this all on your own without God's help. Like, no, I don't need you, sir. Um, no, uh, that's a stronghold in itself is feeling like you can accomplish it all without him. And he's really what gets us through these things. So in our Rooted book, um, page 70 through 72, there's a list of strongholds. I'm going to read through them. And if one of these doesn't hit you uh, as like, I struggle with this. It doesn't have to be something that is like everybody in your life knows that you struggle with this. This can be something that people might not see it in you, but you know it's happening. Um, I, I guarantee that all of us struggle with these things. And honestly, we're going to continue to struggle with these things. Um, the point of doing this is to allow God into our lives, allow God into you know, as Dave said earlier, allow God into our closets where we don't want God to be because we're ashamed of it. Um, that's a lie from the enemy to be ashamed of things you don't want God to see. God knows. Some of the strongholds are bitterness, control, idolatry, despair or hopelessness, jealousy, sexual immorality, false teaching and religions, insecurity, rejection, deceit, fear, and pride. And I know, you know, us reading those things, I can probably pick a few of those. Easy. Easy, that I struggle with. Um, pick them all. At one time in our life uh, or another, you're going, you're probably going to struggle with most of these things. Um, and that's why really learning to acknowledge those things in you now is a big thing. Right. Um, next to those strongholds are the freedoms that God speaks into your life. If you struggle with bitterness, he wants forgiveness for you. Uh, if you struggle with control, he wants you to, you know, learn how to surrender, which is a beautiful act. Idolatry is, you know, contentment. Despair is hope. Um, you can look over these things. So when you look through all of the strongholds, look next to it. Those are the freedoms. And that's what God wants for you. God wants all of these good things for you. So I really, you know... I think that if you take about 10, 15 minutes to really sit, uh, look over these lists of strongholds and freedoms, um, look over them and really take a chance to look at yourself and really ask yourself and ask God, what's going on? Do I struggle with any of these things? And if you don't feel like you struggle with any of them, ask God to you know, show you what you struggle with because it's surprising. Once you're ready and you've got those things that you know you struggle with, uh, on page 69 in this book, there's a prayer and there's two blanks in there and it's for your stronghold and it's for the freedom. I put a stronghold and a freedom in there. Yours are going to be different. Um, if you have more than one, you can Come list on. all of them. You know, obviously everyone has different kinds of conversations with God. And if you have a prayer, you don't have to use this, but this is really, really helpful in what we're trying to, you know, assist you guys in doing. And this... This page really gives you a lot to work off of if yeah. you don't feel super comfortable coming up with prayers. From this prayer, what us leaders hope will happen is that you can open up like your own conversation with God about these things in your life. We're going to get through this together. <laughs> Bye, friends. Love you. Bye. That's week four. Do your homework for week five. Jody is up next week on, on this YouTube channel.